In this new phase of the pandemic, let's review what we know. It's true, we don't know Jack. And it's not our fault. After all, it's called a novel virus. It's novel and it's a virus, which means we can't even see what we're talking about. It's as invisible to us as truth is to CNN, which makes it scary. How scary? Well, the New York Times just did a piece on quarantining with a ghost. Yeah, rather than focused on real stuff, they covered unexplained activities during house arrest. Shaking window shades, rattling doorknobs, cold water in the shower, and Joe Biden in the basement. Of course, sometimes houses creak and plumbing acts weird. But that's my post-burrito stomach, not a story. So it's got to be a ghost. Oh, yes, the light flickered. Must be a ghost. I put my house keys away, but now they're on the floor. Must be a ghost. Not the fact that I've been drinking all day and everything's on the floor, including me. Now, I'm not saying ghosts don't exist. Look what I found in my sock drawer. Arf, 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 you know? Look, I get it. If the most likely explanation for something, i.e. the truth, doesn't grab you, there's no story. A ghost is so much more fun than not a ghost. Who cares if it's false? The only thing missing, though, is gender or race. I anticipate a follow-up piece with old, white, sexist ghosts. You know, I swear I saw a ghost, and he kept checking out my breasts. Or worse, the ghost didn't actually call me a racist name, but I could tell he voted for Trump. Why can't ghosts be racist or sexist? Aren't we all ready, according to the media? We don't need a pulse to be hateful. See Donald Trump, who once again blamed China for the virus. You've said many times that the U.S. is doing far better than any other country when it comes to testing. Yes. Why does that matter? Why is this a global competition to you if everyday Americans are still losing their lives and we're still seeing more cases every day? Well, they're losing their lives everywhere in the world. And maybe that's a question you should ask China. Why are you saying that to me specifically? I'm telling you, I'm not saying it specifically to anybody. I'm saying it to anybody that would ask a nasty question that's like that. I love it. You know where this went. What we saw in that exchange with Weijia Zhang is something that has racial overtones. Uh, it is racist to look at an Asian American White House correspondent and say, ask China. So for the Pillsbury Doughboy to believe his own droppings, he has to pretend the last four years of this didn't exist. China. 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 Look, it came out of China. Okay. <laughs> How did Brian miss that? Well, with the exception of meals, he misses a lot of things. You want a pattern of behavior? Here he is claiming the right obsesses over Russia. It's so disappointing to look at what we're seeing from right-wing media these days, where there's such an obsession with the deep state and these uh, revelations about the Russia probe. So disappointed. Again, for him to say that without puking, he must ignore this. What does Putin have on Trump? Has Trump been compromised? This is the letter of intent for the proposed Trump Tower Moscow. Some serious people in and out of government asking whether a U.S. president might be some kind of unwitting or witting Russian asset. Whether the president of the United States is an agent of a foreign power. We all know the president's no collusion, no obstruction mantra. We know it's false. Do you still believe the president could be a Russian asset? I think it's possible. Oh, man. When CNN says you're obsessed, it's like a drunk saying that your breath smells of rum. Their success relies on no one else having a short-term memory. Here's Chris Cuomo blaming Fox for future deaths. Everyone around him has a mask on. Now, he does it because he wants to keep up the Fox farce, this BS that COVID-19 is overrated. I guess the anti-elitists over there are okay with 10,000 more dead. So how does this bozo get away with that? I think he hopes you forgot about the thousands of real deaths in rest homes, which happened under his brother's watch. During that travesty, what did Chris ask his bro? Do you think that you are an attractive person now because you're single and ready to mingle? Do you really think you are some desirable single person and that this is not just people's pain I mean, coming out of them? You know, I hate rehashing this, 
But when that jerk tries to lay 10,000 dead future bodies on us, we got to show you that the dead already exists. And it hits a little closer to his home for Chris than he'd like to admit. So how do you respond when someone accuses you of wanting death just because you want to feed your family by getting back to work? Just say this. If you want us to stay inside, you must really love spousal abuse. Because domestic violence, according to the Times, is surging under the shutdown. Is it true that you'd like to see more abused spouses, Chris? It sounds absurd, because it is. But that's how the media smears you. Plus, they always have the answers, but only after the fact, which makes me wonder where the hell were you guys back when this pandemic started? Why did you hold out on us? It's criminal that you had the answer key, kept it hidden until after all this death. Fact is, anyone who says they know is full of it. Not just the media, but experts too. They got so many things wrong. Masks, shutting down travel, ventilators, sending contagious people to rest homes. But if no one knows anything, you might as well invite anyone to discuss a pandemic. CNN had Greta Thunberg on a virus special, maybe because they put more value on her cool words than the actual virus briefings. They skipped. Greta call, uh, cited the importance of science, a straw man argument since who's not pro-science, and then she linked it to her crusade climate. Apparently, she pledged 100 grand to UNICEF, which is awesome. Damn, when I was 17, all I had was a BB gun and a stack of swanks that I stored in a tree. If this is a trend for CNN, I can't wait to see who they choose for future specials. The 2020 election with Greta Thunberg. Race in America with Greta Thunberg. Are ghosts real with Greta Thunberg? But, you know, they could do worse. Have you seen their nightly lineup? It's a strange thing how they keep trying to make this pandemic political. You can't blame Trump for that. First, he shut down the economy. Then he doled out trillions. Now he's desperate to reopen. What political side is that? He's all over the place, just like America. Here's how you know this new red versus blue division is bogus. The media can't figure out how to cover the states. They want to find failure in red states and gloat and successes in blue states and cheer. But so far, that's not happening. Also, the right tends to be risk averse. The left, it's the opposite. Yet those who want to go back to work are portrayed as right wing and, scold and those scolding us to stay in indefinitely aren't. So the script is flipped, meaning it's not right versus left. Instead, it's media versus Trump. Whatever he's for, they have to be against. At least you're different, smarter, you get it. In a world in which we face something we've never faced, we're lucky. We have 50 experiments going on at once. And each experiment can run a dozen more. Each state can try out a plan. Some might do great, some might not. But we can compare and contrast. It's genius without trying. It's exactly what you would do if you don't have the right answer yet. Idiots would prefer one date for the whole country to go back, which is like placing all your chips on one number on roulette. It feels great if you win, but you likely lose your shirt. And here, shirts equal lives. As opposed to the 50 state route, it's like your 401k. It's not all one stock, it's a portfolio to hedge against risk. It's smart and unavoidable. And we're gonna learn a lot. We're gonna finally see the truths that have eluded us these past months. No more ghosts. It'll just be brave Americans getting up and going to work and protecting each other the best they can with simple consideration and the kind of common sense that elected Trump over Hillary. It's the great American challenge of your lifetime. I think we're ready. Period. Let's welcome tonight's guest. You can't lose when he talks news. Washington Times opinion editor, Fox News contributor, Charlie Hurt. He's got more singles than a strip club ATM. Singer, songwriter, host of The Pursuit on Fox Nation, John Rich. She's as fiery as she is wiry. Host of Sincerely Cat on Fox Nation, Cat Timp. And every boat he's on becomes a submarine. My massive sidekick and host of Nuff Said on Fox Nation, Tyrus. All right, Charles, welcome back. What do you think of the shame and blame game you see among the media? 
Oh, it's incredible. And I think you're exactly right. You, you, th that monologue should have been in the Federalist Papers. It is a perfect yes. enunciation of federalism. It's exactly what the founders intended, and it is exactly how you get through something like a pandemic. You have 50 experiments. You have 50 different efforts. Everybody, and, and we can all assume, we can just assume that everybody, every governor in America wants to do whatever uh, they have to do to save lives. Right. And there are going to be different ideas for doing that and we can pick the good ones and learn from the bad ones but of course the the dichotomy here is between people who hate Trump and yeah. Trump and it's no matter what Trump does they hate him and uh, and and you get this real sense that they're actually rooting for failure because they want to see Trump fail exactly you know John if you want to reopen your restaurant or ba a bar people are gonna say you want people to die that's how they reason I actually had a tweet that said that to me today because we reopened uh, Redneck Riviera here in Nashville, mm -hmm. of course, yeah. right along with state guidelines, city guidelines. And somebody actually said John Rich's new record is going to be called I Kill My Fans for Money. I mean, Jeez. like this insanity. But, you know, you can't listen to that <laughs> nonsense because that's obviously, you know, we're trying to get our country back open safely, just like Charlie just said. And that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. And Kat, you know, no one knows when to open and no one knows, like, it, 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 are we too early or too late? There's no exact date. The only way to do is to find out with these 50 openings and see the interaction between the states and the virus. That's what we have to do, right? No, I disagree. I think that what we should do is just remain closed indefinitely and focus on calling Trump racist over uh, <laughs> anything and everything. That's really important. Uh, right. No, especially a situation like this, right, where I'm so glad that you brought that up in your monologue because China has mm -hmm. been covering up the severity of its coronavirus uh, crisis for a while now, right? right? And why do people cover things up to make themselves look better? What is it to make yourself look better? It's to engage in competition, okay? Yeah. That's clearly what he meant. You don't need a PhD in social justice to figure that out. You need a dictionary and the ability <laughs> to read. Uh, yeah. I, I, like, he was making a point worth making. So what should he have done? He should have just said, you know what? You're Chinese, so I can't answer that if <laughs> yes. you ask me that. But if a white reporter asks me, then I can totally answer it. I mean, damn, like, what does he want people to do? Yeah, or what do true. people want him to do? Yeah. I can't answer that. So, Tyrus, this is like a brave new world, and yet we have a media that keeps, like, basically crapping on our citizens for their individual concerns. They're not cutting them any slack, which drives me crazy. I know it's not a question. Well... <laughs> yeah, it, it was a, a statement, but I, I got you. Yeah. Um, the, the thing about it is we can we have to make decisions. We have to make personal, individual decisions in this country uh, pretty soon. And I think that's the whole point of what it is to be an American. Mm -hmm. We have the guidelines from the CDC. We have things we can do. But we know now that there's sharks in the water. We know that right. whether we stay indoors or we go outdoors, we'll run the risk. We can take right. precautions. We can make that decision. But we need to be allowed to make that decision. If, yes. if a man wants to open up his restaurant under those guidelines and I decide to go to his restaurant because I'm following my guidelines and I want to take that chance, yeah. that should be, there should be no argument for that. That should be fine. We know what's going on. It's just whenever they try to make medicine, science, political, it never works. And this yeah. is where people are making their own decisions, and that's what it's all about.